Hello and welcome to this video on using the characteristic equation to find the set of all eigenvalues or you know this set of all eigenvalues is also referred to as the spectrum of a square matrix. So in this video I'm going to show you how the how, how this uh, characteristic equation is derived what it is, and um, then going through, go through several examples where we're given a square matrix, uh, find the characteristic equation for that matrix, solve the characteristic equation in order to find this spectrum of the matrix we're given, right, the set of all these eigenvalues. All right. So first page got you know on the character what's called the characteristic equation of a matrix. So suppose we're given a square matrix called A, and again it could have any name you want, but I'm calling it A here. So we are trying to find eigenpairs, and if I've if you've been following along, you I'm hope I'm assuming you know what an eigenpair of a matrix is. We're trying to find eigenpairs, right? Pairs of, uh, of, of scalars and vectors, lambda and a vector x, right? Where lambda is a scalar and the vector x there is a non zero vector. Remember, eigenvectors were non zero vectors such that the following held. So you know, the matrix times the vector is equivalent to just the scalar times the vector. All right, that's what an eigenvector and, and corresponding eigenvalue were. They were, two, they were a vector and a value, a pair, that satisfied this equation. All right. So when I multiply a matrix by the vector, all I get back as an output is just simply a scalar multiple of that same vector. Now, to derive this, what's called the characteristic equation for a matrix A. And go the following. This equation I have here that defines eigenvalue and eigenvector is equivalent to, you know, left side still A times X. <coughs> and then you know the right side I'll, I'll also turn into a, a another matrix have another square matrix over here as well. You know, I have square matrix A on the left. You know, the, 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 the vector x I could rewrite as the square matrix i, where i and a have the same size. Okay, so if this is a 3 by 3, I'm talking about the 3 by 3 identity matrix. If this is a 5 by 5, you know, this is the 5 by 5 identity matrix. But a vector x is equivalent to the identity matrix times x, right? That will still be x. And now I have on both sides, you know, a part of the expression you know, the same size square matrix. So this equation is equivalent to AX equals lambda times I times X, where again, I is the identity matrix. Then I can subtract, you know, I'll subtract the lambda IX from both sides, giving me AX minus lambda IX equals the zero vector, right? Not the number zero, but the, you know, the vector with all zeros in it. And then, you know, these are all matrices here except for lambda, right? A, X, I, X, these are matrices. Remember, you can, ma the matrix, matrices are distributive. You know, matrix multiplication is distributive over matrix addition. So you see I have the vector X, this, you know, column vector, column matrix X on the right side of both of these expressions. So I can factor it out on the right and what I'm left with is A minus lambda I, right? This matrix multiplied by the vector X equals the zero vector. And now do you see, now you can see now why the, the, the matrix I was introduced, right? The identity matrix was introduced. So that way this is actually defined, this subtraction here, you know, because a square matrix minus, you know, another matrix of the same size, I can actually put these together. Now, Looking at this equation, 
Right. This equation has at least one solution all the time. Right. This is one of those homogeneous equations where you have zero on the other side. You know, this equation always has at least the trivial solution, x equals zero. All right, if I replace x with the zero vector, all right, it wouldn't matter what a minus lambda i is, because anything times the zero vector will give me the zero vector. All right, so this always has at least one solution. All right, so th this equation has the trivial solution, you know, x equals the zero vector for any value of lambda. Right, it doesn't matter what lambda is, if x is 0, this is true. Now, whether or not the equation has more than just the trivial solution really depends on the matrix A minus lambda i. Right. If the matrix A minus lambda i is non-singular, meaning invertible. It has an inverse. You know, its determinant is not zero. Then that trivial solution will be the only solution. And that's a problem. All right, we're trying to find these eigenvectors and eigenvalues associated with them or corresponding to them. As I mentioned earlier, you know, eigenvectors are non-zero vectors by definition. So if a minus lambda i, right, if a minus lambda i has an inverse, then the only solution is the zero vector, and that would not be considered an eigenvector of a by definition, right? So the zero vector, not, not an eigenvector. Alright, so like I said, there's a problem there. So how do we how do we get around that problem? Well we have to think of okay, you know, when this matrix A minus lambda I has an inverse, that's bad. So we want to find out when would this matrix not have an inverse, right? Be not invertible. So that's this point here. If A minus lambda I is singular Right, meaning not invertible, doesn't have an inverse that exists, then the equation will have other non-zero solutions. There will be solutions to this that we, will, we can consider eigenvectors of matrix A. So if A minus lambda I is singular, then the equation I'm looking at up here will have non-zero solutions, right? Solutions other than the trivial solution that we desire. So, we must find the values of lambda for which this matrix A minus lambda I is singular. All right, I'm trying to figure out what could lambda be that'll make A minus lambda I not have an inverse. Right, and these values of lambda that I find that make this that make this matrix not have an inverse will be called the you know the eigenvalues of matrix A. Well, if A minus lambda I is singular, remember that means that the determinant of the ma a very quick way to check that a matrix is singular is if the determinant of that matrix is zero. So, with A minus lambda I is singular, or when the determinant, right, DET, the determinant of this A minus lambda I equals zero, the number zero. And I have this in a nice little wavy box here. This determinant of A minus lambda I equals zero. Uh, this equation is called the characteristic equation of matrix A. And it's in the solu uh, solving this equation where we'll find our eigenvalues of A. We'll find these values of lambda such that this is true, right? That makes this true. Uh, and this expression on the left that I have here, the, this determinant of A minus lambda I, 
right, this expression determinant of a minus lambda i, this will be a polynomial in lambda. All right, so it'll be a polynomial where my unknown in the polynomial is the, the value of lambda. And this polynomial will be called the characteristic polynomial you know, for, the, for this equation, this characteristic equation. And finally, one last little definition here before I get into some examples. You know, the solutions of this equation, which will be values of lambda, right? We're, we're finding values of lambda that make this true. Uh, the solutions of this equation are the eigenvalues of matrix A. All right, and then the set containing all of these values, right, all of these eigenvalues, is called the spectrum of matrix A. And the notation for that is lambda of A. It's like a little, you know, the lambda symbol. And then in parentheses, the matrix. And when you're seeing this, this is the spectrum of A, or the set of the set containing all of the eigenvalues of A, or the set containing all of the solutions of this equation, right? This characteristic equation, right there. All right, so lots of stuff, right? Lots of lots of word, fancy words there. Um, now let me get into some examples all right, where, I'm at, where I'm asked to find the spectrum of a matrix all right, or again the, the set of all the eigenvalues of a matrix or you know all the solutions of this very special and I'm going to write this out a lot this characteristic equation the determinant of a minus lambda i equals zero. All right. So my first example is a two by, I have a couple two by two matrices and then a couple three by three and you could do this again for four by four, five by five, any square matrix. It's just the larger the matrix gets, uh, the more tedious the problem will become. All right. So here I'm asked to find, and for the, for the rest of the examples in the video, I'm asked to find the spectrum of the matrix. So here I have a two by two matrix called A, columns negative two, one, negative seven, six. Right. So if I'm fi asked to find the eigenvalues right, there, of A or the spectrum of A, first I'm gonna find that, I'm gonna find the characteristic polynomial. Right, we're gonna set up that characteristic equation I'm going to find that characteristic polynomial first. Right. Now remember what that was. That was that was this expression here. That was the determinant of a minus lambda i. Where in this case i is the two by two uh, identity matrix. So off to the side, let me actually write what that looks like. What does a minus lambda i look like? So off to the side here, a minus, you know, again, lambda is unknown here. I don't know what the eigenvalues of the matrix are yet. So lambda is like a, a variable in this case. All right, this looks like this. You know, matrix a is that two by two up there that I have, negative two, one, negative seven, six minus you know, the scalar lambda times the two by two identity matrix with columns one, zero, and zero, one. Well, do you see that lambda times i is you know just simply gonna be the identity matrix with lambdas down the main diagonal? All right, this is negative two, one, negative seven, six, minus, and then lambda times i is simply lambda zero, zero lambda for the columns. And then subtracting these, right, these have the same size, so matrix addition, subtraction it is defined. I get the following, you know, negative two minus lambda for the first row, first column, negative seven minus zero, so negative seven for the first row, second column, then second row, first column, one minus zero, and then second row, second column, six minus lambda. 
So th this is A minus lambda right here. Notice it's just matrix A, right? Just matrix A. All you do is put minus lambda down the main diagonal entries. See, I have negative 2, then minus lambda. And then 6, minus lambda. And then all of the entries that aren't on the main diagonal stay the way they are. Negative 7, negative 7, 1, 1. So, so I'm not going to do this for the rest of the examples um, when I write out what a minus lambda i is. I'm just going to take matrix, the matrix I'm given and put a minus lambda after all the main diagonal entries. Right, it's that simple. Okay, so this characteristic polynomial. Now, what is the determinant of this a minus lambda i? So remember, another way to denote determinant was by, with big bars around the matrix. So little bar, you know, negative 2 minus lambda, then negative 7, and the bar again, and 1, 6 minus lambda. All right, now this is just a 2 by 2. So remember, the finding the determinant was pretty simple. Take this, the product of the these two entries on the main diagonal, and then subtract the product of the two entries that aren't on the main diagonal. All right, so this is a negative 2 minus lambda multiplied by 6 minus lambda, then minus and then negative 7 times 1. And I'll simplify this and, and you're going to see that this is a polyn this is going to be a polynomial in lambda. Right, lambda will be like the, the x, you know, lambda will be the, the variable in the polynomial, the unknown. All right, so multiplying these two, I'd have, you know, negative 2 times 6 is, you know, negative 12. And then the outer, you know, negative 2 times negative lambda, be plus 2 lambda. Now I'm done with the negative 2, move over to the negative lambda, that's minus 6 lambda. And then negative lambda times negative lambda would be plus lambda squared. And then we have minus negative 7 or plus 7. And I don't know about you, but I personally, you know, I like writing polynomials in descending order. All right, highest power first. So I got the lambda squared. Uh, then the lambda terms together here, 2 lambda minus 6 lambda, negative 4 lambda. And then the constants, negative 12 plus 7, negative 5. All right. So this here. This is the determinant of a minus lambda i. This is called the characteristic polynomial for this particular matrix. Right. And you see it as a polynomial, right? It's a degree two polynomial in in the in in lambda. Okay. Now we're gonna see in a minute that I don't always wanna write out the polynomial in general form like this. Um, it would be better actually if you factored the characteristic polynomial completely because you're going to be setting this thing equal to zero, right? You know, the, the, the big question I mentioned on the first couple pages, right, was when was this equal to zero? Because if this is equal to zero, then a minus lambda i would be a uh, singular, right? And then that a minus lambda i times x vector x equals the zero vector would have some non-zero solutions. Right. So two. Now let's look at the characteristic equation. And I'll say, let's say, solve the characteristic equation. And here was the characteristic equation for a matrix. It was the determinant of that matrix, you know, minus lambda i. When is that equal to zero? All right. So it's it's our characteristic polynomial. You know, when is that equal to zero? Now we've seen already what the characteristic polynomial is, and already here that's lambda squared. Oops, not lambda squared, uh, exponent, sorry, lambda squared 
minus 4 times lambda minus 5. When is that equal to 0? Now, what you have here is a, a quadratic equation, right? This is a degree 2 polynomial in lambda. So you could use, if you wished, the quadratic formula. Right? That's, uh, so this is going to go back. Sol solving these characteristic equations is going to take you back to you know, intermediate algebra or pre-calc class you know, when you had to solve polynomial equations. So if, you're, if, you're, if your factoring is a bit rusty or you don't recall what the quadratic formula is, you, you might want to go back and review how to, how to factor polynomials and solve quadratic equations, right? Because the, all these characteristic polynomials we're going to see, at least in my video today, you should be able to factor them down to where you have degree 1 and degree 2 factors. So when you're solving these equations, these characteristic equations, uh, it'll boil down to solving a bunch of linear and quadratic equations. All right, well, this one I can factor. All right, this is actually lambda minus 5 multiplied by lambda plus 1. And when is that equal to 0? And remember the zero product property? Remember this product is only equal to 0. A product is only equal to 0 if one of the factors is 0. Uh, that's in, when, when we're dealing with real numbers here, and we're assuming these are real numbers. All right, so where this leads me to, you know, lambda minus 5, when's that equal to 0? Lambda minus 5 equals 0 when lambda equals 5. And when is lambda plus 1 equal to 0, the other factor? Well, that's when lambda, uh, just subtracting 1 from both sides, lam that's when lambda equals negative 1. And you can check these by plugging them back in. Okay. Uh, and there we go. Right, here is our... Uh, here are the eigenvalues, right? These are the eigenvalues of matrix A. 5 and uh, negative 1. Right. The eigenvalues of matrix A. And notice also that there are no, there are no you know, they, they both have a, and again, this is a word that you pro hopefully heard and are familiar with from algebra class or pre-calc. Uh, they both have a multiplicity of 1, right? They are not repeated solutions to this. You know, x uh, lambda minus 5 had a power of 1. Lambda plus 1 had an exponent of 1. Right? These were to the first power. Um, so that these both have a multiplicity of 1. So they're both both distinct they're both distinct solutions. All right, that just means non, non, not repeating, non repeating, or have have a multiplicity of one. Same thing. Uh, and that's going to come into play later in a, in, a, in a future video talking about, you know, what's the relationship between a matrix and its distinct so, uh, eigenvalues. Right. Uh, okay. And then again, if you'd like to just check the solutions here. Now how about when, when lambda equals 5... You know, what is what is a minus lambda i look like? Well, that would be a minus 5i. Right? And a minus 5i, going back up to a here. Um, you know, just again, all, when I say a minus lambda i, a minus 5i, I'm just subtracting lambda or subtracting 5 from the main diagonal entry. So that would be negative 7, negative 7, 1, and then 1. And do you see how this would have a determinant of zero? As look, the first column and second column are the exact same thing. 
uh, this has a determinant of 0. And that's exactly what we wanted, right? I was trying to find these values of lambda such that a minus lambda i has a determinant of 0. Uh, and how about negative 1? You know, when lambda equals negative 1, we're looking at a minus lambda i. That would be a plus i, right? Because if you replace lambda with negative 1, that would be minus negative 1i, or a plus i. So let's just simply take matrix A here and add 1, right? Subtract negative 1 or add 1 down the main diagonal. So I'd have negative 1, negative 7, 1, and 7. And do you see, oh, sorry, negative 1, negative 7, 1, and 7, where I just, you know, took matrix A, added 1 down the main diagonal. See how this has a determinant of 0 as well? All right, the, the first column and second column are just, you know, 7 times each other. You know, they're just 7 times the first, you know, they're, they're scalar multiples. I just multiply the first column by 7 and get the second column. And when that happened, right, when you have columns or rows that are scalar multiples, the determinant will be 0. And you can check it would just be negative 7 minus negative 7, 0. And I guess I shouldn't put an exclamation point here because people might confuse that with 0 factorial, which is 1. But it has a determinant of 0, both of these. And that's what we wanted. All right, we found these values of lambda such that you know, a minus lambda i had a determinant of 0. a minus lambda i had no inverse. And therefore, our equation earlier, the a minus lambda i times vector x equals the 0 vector, would have solutions. And I'll talk about finding those solutions, those vectors, those eigenvectors uh, in the next video. All right. So then finally, you know, now that I have found the eigenvalues and verified them, we have our spectrum. All right, so this the spectrum. Uh, the spectrum then of matrix A that I was given. All right, note denoted by this is the set containing all of the eigenvalues of a right so negative one and positive five right, there's there's the spectrum of matrix a right just the set containing the eigenvalues or the solutions to the characteristic equation however you want to word it okay so again, it can be a bit tedious, right? especially the larger the size of the matrix is, it becomes a little more involved. Uh, these 2 by 2 matrices you know, shouldn't be so bad. So I've got one more 2 by 2 matrix where I'm asked to do the same thing, find the spectrum. Right. So here we go. So it's, uh, now it's matrix B, right? So everywhere I saw A earlier, just replace it with B. So first column, 4, negative 10. Second column, negative 1, negative 5. And uh, yeah, find the spectrum, right? The set of all the eigenvalues. So first, first, what's the, de I'll, I'll, I'll determine that characteristic polynomial. What's the determinant? of b minus lambda i, right? And again, I just replaced a with b. Well, that would be, and again, little bars for the determinant. Now, b minus lambda i is just matrix b, where you put minus lambda down the main diagonal entries. So 4 minus lambda up there, negative 5 minus lambda down here. And then the other entries that aren't on the main diagonal stay the way they are. Negative 1, negative 10. Okay, so there's b minus lambda i, and we're doing the determinant, right, with these two bars here. So again, the, the, these the product of the main diagonal entries here, 4 minus lambda, multiplied by negative 5 minus lambda, and then minus negative 1 times negative 10. All right, in multiplying these two, do you see I would get lambda squared? Right, ne you know, the, there's negative 20. Right, there's a negative 20 term. 
4 times negative 5. Then there's minus 4 lambda, plus 5 lambda, negative times negative. That would be plus lambda. And then minus 20. So I have lam this, this, the product of these two, lambda squared plus lambda minus 20. And then we have an, uh, minus another 10. So this is lambda squared uh, plus lambda minus 30. All right. And then as I was saying in the last example, I would recommend even before the whole setting equal to zero, I mean you know you're going to set it equal to zero eventually, right, for that characteristic equation. But I would say try to factor this as much as you can. And uh, you know, if, if you have a polynomial with rational coefficients, you, know, you should be able to factor it down to degree ones and degree twos. Right? This is a degree two polynomial in lambda right now. Factor completely. All right, so this is a quadratic here. Uh, and this one would factor nicely. And if it doesn't factor, then I would just use the quadratic formula, right? But this factors to lambda plus 6 multiplied by lambda minus 5. And you can double check me on that. You know, multiply these two, you get lambda squared plus lambda minus 30 back. All right, so then I'm working with the, that characteristic equation. When, when is this characteristic polynomial here, the determinant of b minus lambda i, you know, when is that equal to zero? I'm, I'm solving this. So that's lambda plus 6 times lambda minus 5. Right, when when is that equal to zero? And then it's already nice and factored. Pretty easy to f to see here what the what the values of lambda need to be. What the what the eigenvalues will be for matrix B. You know, when is lambda plus six equal to zero? When lambda is negative six. And uh, when is lambda minus five equal to zero? When lambda equals positive five. And there you go. Right. There are here are the eigenvalues, and again, notice they are distinct as well. They both have a multiplicity of one. Again, right, uh, negative six only makes one of these factors zero. Positive five only makes one of these factors zero. All right, so again, they are two you know distinct eigenvalues. Right, so here they are. The i what are called the eigenvalues. of matrix B. Right, it was called matrix B this time. All right, and now that I've solved this, and you can, again you can double check, double check, you know, if I, if I put, if I replace lambda with negative 6, here I'm just going to check real quick, and I'm only going to do this for the 2 by 2 ones, you could do it on your own for the 3 by 3s when I get to them. You know, for lambda equals negative 6, you know, we have A plus 6i, Right. When I replace, you know, remember, a minus lambda i, that'd be a minus negative 6, or I'm sorry, wow, I did it to myself, b, matrix b. I have b minus lambda i, replacing lambda with negative 6 makes that b plus 6 i. What would that matrix be? So this is just take matrix b here and add 6 to the main diagonal. So 10 here, 1 there, and then negative 10, negative 1. And do you see? The first column is just the second column times negative 10. Right? So this, this has determinant of 0 as we want. Right? I want the determinant to be equal to 0. Okay. So that's good. Right? That, is, that is a valid eigenvalue for matrix B. And how about lambda equals 5? Right, let's check that. So I'm looking at b minus 5i, right, replacing lambda with 5. Uh, that's just subtracting 5 down the main diagonal. So negative 1 here, negative 10 here, and negative 1 here, negative 10 here. And do you see how the first column and second column are exactly the same? This will definitely have a determinant of 0. So exactly what we wanted. All right, exactly what we wanted. I wanted to find these values of lambda 
so that b minus lambda i has a determinant of 0, and we have done that. All right. All right, and then finally I'll state the spectrum. Right. So the, the spectrum of matrix B, right, denoted by this little lambda of B here, is a set. A little set braces, and inside that set go the eigenvalues of B, negative 6 and positive 5. And that is that is what was asked for by my instructions, right? What is the spectrum of B? Great. All right. So so far so good, I hope. Right? With two by two matrices, and, and you follow the same procedure for three by threes, four by fours. It's just the determinant gets a little harder. Remember, with a two by two matrix, it's it's not hard. Just cross minus cross, you know. Um, but with a three by three, four by four, and higher, you know, there 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 are some other procedures that needed to be followed to find the determinant. Right? You use a, a co you know, cofactor expansion, or you could do uh, elementary row operations until you get it to be a, a a triangular matrix, and you know, just keep track of what operations you did to see how the determinant would be changed. But whatever, um, just know that for three by three, four by four, you know, higher, larger size square matrices that uh, just know that the, the, the determinant process is more a little more involved. All right, so same question. Right? I'm asked to find the spectrum of this square matrix here. Now I have a 3 by 3. This is matrix C with columns 4, 1, 0, negative 4, negative 2, 5, 0, 0, 3. All right. Okay. Um, so the first... As with the last two examples, what's that characteristic polynomial, which is this determinant of c minus lambda i? All right, again, I'm just replacing everywhere there was an a or a b before. Now, now there's a c. All right, All right so this is a you know, little big bar here, and then remember, c minus lambda i is just simply going to matrix C and putting a minus lambda down just the three main diagonal entries, the four, the negative two, and the three. So four minus lambda. You know, negative two minus lambda in the second row, second column, and then third row, third column, three minus lambda. And then everything else, every other entry that's not on the main diagonal stays the way it is. So negative four, and zero, and one, and zero, 0, 5. All right. Now, this one, you know, I've got to pick this example because it's a little, little simple, but pretty easy to find using cofactor expansion. Uh, if I find this determinant using a cofactor, I'll do a cofactor expansion down the first, the third column. because I noticed that that column has a couple zeros in it and only one, you know, potentially non-zero, I don't know what lambda is, but potentially non-zero uh, entry in it. So cofactor expansion, you know, down, down the third column. And I'd have at the end there, you know, just three minus lambda, right? Because it would be zero, zero times whatever the cofactor of that position is, plus zero times whatever the cofactor is here. And then plus three minus lambda times, then the co, now the cofactor of three minus lambda, remember the cofactor of an entry is, you know, negative one raised to the row plus column. Well, three plus three is six. So negative one to the sixth is positive one. So one times the minor at this position, which is remove that row, remove that column. So we're multiplying by the, the, the minor is a de the determinant of the, of the matrix left over when I remove that row and remove that column, which will be this four mi the 2 by 2, 4 minus lambda 1, and then negative 4, negative 2 minus lambda. All right, so now I have this nice little 2 by 2, and that's easier to take. Okay.
So I have a 3 minus lambda, which is already like its own factor. So in the end, I'm not going to actually multiply this all out, right? I already have here a factor of 3 minus lambda, so it's kind of already partially factored for me. Uh, then we're going to multiply this by, put in big brackets here, the determinant of this 2 by 2 matrix, right? This minor, which is 4 minus lambda multiplied by negative 2 minus lambda, and then minus, you know, plus 4. I'll just write plus 4. It'll be minus negative 4. All right. Now this is not factored. All right. I'm going to try to get this into a form that maybe I can factor, maybe not. We'll see. But 3 minus lambda, I'm going to leave that alone. That's already a factor of this expression, part of the product. Okay, so I've got the 3 minus lambda still as a factor. And when you simplify this completely, and hopefully you can follow this, um, you know, when I multiply these two, I'd have, you know, negative 8, then negative 4 lambda, plus 2 lambda, then minus 2 lambda, and then plus lambda squared. So I would have a lambda squared. And then as I said with the lambdas, you have negative 4 plus 2, that's minus 2 lambda. And then with the constants, you have negative 8, but then you got the plus 4 over here, right? You have negative 8, but then over here you have plus 4, that'd be minus 4. Okay, and then cl close that off. And, and double check, right? Multiply these, add the 4, you, you should be getting this back, all right? Now, question is, you know, I've got a factor here, great, 3 minus lambda. Can I factor this and, uh, you know, over, over the integers, I guess? I, I, I could factor over the complex numbers if I wanted, right? But um, can I factor this in the way you're used to being taught factoring, you know, over the integers in, in algebra class, you know? So simple, simple check here. Are there factors of negative 4 that add up to negative 2? Well, there's 1 and negative 4, there's 2 and negative 2, and no. No, there aren't. Uh, you could also take the discriminant, you know, b squared minus 4ac, where a is 1, b is negative 2, c is negative 4. Remember, for a quadratic, take that discriminant, and if the discriminant's not a perfect square, then it's not factorable, right? So b squared is 4, and then 4ac is, uh, you know, negative 16. 4 minus negative 16 would be 4 plus 16. That's 20. That's not a perfect square. So this is not factorable. This this is it then, right? This is how I'm going to leave it. Don't multiply by 3 minus lambda because you're just going to have to factor again. You'll just you'll just get this, right? So there, there's my uh, characteristic polynomial, you know, written in factored form. Next is solving the characteristic equation. So solve, and then you know, the, the characteristic polynomial, that determinant of c minus lambda i, when is that equal to 0, right? So when is 3 minus lambda uh, multiplied by lambda squared minus 2 lambda minus 4, right? when is that equal to 0? Now this time I'll actually split them up, right? Because there's some I gotta do some more with this. You know, I have a degree one, which is easy, right? This this will be true if three minus lambda equals zero, or lambda squared minus two lambda minus four equals zero. First one, no problem, right? Not a problem at all. Uh, first one, that'll be true when lambda is three, right? Obviously, right? Just add lambda, you get 3 equals lambda, lambda equals 3. This one, now you can solve quadratics by either the complete the square method, if you remember that, or the quadratic formula, and I'm going to assume you know what that is here. I'm sorry, but if you're, if you're at the point where you're learning about eigenvalues and eigenvectors, you should know what that is, or how to fa and, how to, and how to factor polynomials and solve polynomial equations. So we're getting the po I'll, I'll write up here the possible solutions of you know the op remember it's the opposite of b which in this case is negative two so positive two then one with the plus one with the minus right should we get two different solutions here and then the big square root and then b squared and I already mentioned what b squared minus four ac was right it's going to be twenty underneath this root 
this radical symbol. But b squared minus, you know, 4ac, so again, plus 16, right, that's minus negative 16. And all that divided by 2 times a, the coefficient on the square, 2 times 1 is 2. Now this can be simplified, right, this is 2 plus or minus the square root of 20, all divided by 2, and uh, the square root of 20, right, that, that is not a simplified radical, because you can, you know, there, there's a factor of 20 that is a perfect square, and that would be 4, right, you can break up the square root of 20 into the square root of 4 times the square root of 5, so that's 2 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 5, right. And then each of these is a factor of 2. You can pull that out, cancel the 2's. And so I'm getting lambda equals, you know, 1 plus the square root of 5. Lambda equals 1 minus the square root of 5. And there we go. Right, one plus, or you could write 1 plus or minus the square root of 5. That should be the least of your worries, right? This is, this is algebra class here, right? Solving quadratics. And there we go. And uh, again, each of these is a nice distinct eigenvalue, right? None of these are have a multiplicity would have a multiplicity higher than one. And uh, that now we can state the spectrum. Uh, we have the list of eigenvalues, and again, you can check these if you wish. Now, three is obvious, right? Three of three is obvious. If I were to subtract three from all the diagonal entries, the main diagonal entries. I'd get, you know, 1 there, negative 5 there, and then 0 there, and then you'd have a column full of zeros. And if you see a column full of zeros or a row full of zeros, that, that matrix definitely has a determinant of 0. Uh, it's these two that would be a little hairier to check, right? If I subtract 1 plus the square root of 5 from all the diagonal entries, that matrix should have a determinant of 0. And if you subtract 1 minus the square root of 5, from all the main diagonal entries, then you know, C minus that 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 should have a determinant of zero as well. All right. So finally, now that we've solved the characteristic equation, the spectrum, right? Lambda of C, right? This was called matrix C here. Uh, so the spectrum of matrix C is the set with you know three, one plus the square root of five and 1 minus the square root of 5 in it. Or if you'd like, you can write 1 plus or minus the square root of 5. Um, I tend not to like doing that because too often people will say that that's one solution when it, in, when it is in fact two. All right. Great, so there are three you know, distinct eigenvalues here. Wonderful. All right, so I've got one final example of this. It's the same procedure, right? Now, again, I've picked an example that'll be nice and easy to do for the determinant. Um, but just know that it can get a little hairier, especially if, you know, if not, I, I picked some here where there's some, you know, some zeros, some zeros in the matrix. You know, that'll make, make finding the determinant a bit easier, but just know that the procedure doesn't change even if all the entries aren't zero, right? All right, so same thing, same as all the other examples. Find the spectrum of matrix P here. Right. So I'll go in the same order. All right, first, that characteristic polynomial. What's the determinant of P minus lambda I? All right, so I'll, be, again, I'll write the determinant symbol, big bar, and then P minus lambda I is simply P where I put a minus lambda down the main diagonal entries. So 2 minus lambda, 2 minus lambda again, and then 0 minus lambda, or just, you know, minus lambda. And then all the other non-main diagonal entries remain the same. So 0 here, 0 here negative 1 here, 1 here, and then 3 here, 0 here. Alright, now this time, uh, now you could do the second column has a couple zeros, the first row. This time I'm just going to do cofactor expansion down the first row to find the determinant. Alright, 
in doing so, uh, I've got the 2 minus lambda multiplied by, uh, oops, sorry, a minor, so another determinant, and, you know, multiplied by its cofactor, which, you know, since the fir it's first row, first column, it's an even numbered position, 1 plus 1 is 2, it's going to, the cofactor is equal to the minor and not the opposite of the minor like it is in odd positions. So the minor is, I get rid of that row, get rid of that column, and I have the 2 by 2 matrix with 2 minus lambda, 0, 1, and negative lambda. All right, and that's it. All right, there's nothing added, plus 0, plus 0, I'm going down the first row. So that's it. So 2 minus lambda here is a factor in the end. You can just leave it. Uh, if there was more being added, then this wouldn't be a factor, and I'd actually multiply it out. Right, just keep that in mind, you know, just because it's a, it's been a factor in both, you know, the only reason that this first position here has been a factor in my last two examples is because I had rows and columns with, you know, all zeros except for that. Um, yeah, so, if again, if there was more being added here or subtracted, know that that's not a factor then, and you got to actually multiply things out. Okay. So we have 2 minus lambda multiplied by, and then you know, in brackets here, what is this minor? All right. So that's 2 minus lambda multiplied by negative lambda, or 0 minus lambda, all right, minus 0. So, wow, this, this ends up being real simple. Minus 0. So, done. And look, I don't need to multiply this out. This is already completely factored. I have 2 minus lambda times 2 minus lambda again. So 2 minus lambda squared and times negative lambda. And they're completely factored. Beautiful. All right. Now, if you'd like to multiply it out, fine. But this, this is great. All right. So then the characteristic equation, you know, when is this determinant of p minus lambda i equal to uh, equal to zero? All right. So two, I'm, I'm solving for lambda this determinant of p minus lambda i equals zero. All right, so again, this left side I've already gotten in factored form here, 2 minus lambda squared times negative lambda. When's that equal to 0? Well, it's equal to 0 when, you know, 2 minus lambda is equal to 0, or when negative lambda is equal to 0. And again, you don't have to write this twice. I know there's two of them, right? But they're the same factor, right? This is 2 minus lambda squared, and this is where the, that whole multiplicity thing comes in. I'll talk about that in a second. So this is going to be true. This determinant will be 0 when lambda equals 2. Right? 2 minus lambda will be 0 when lambda equals 2. Or, and when is the opposite of lambda equal to 0? Well, well, just when lambda is 0. All right. Just when lambda is 0. Um, okay. Now this time... Right, this time, this this eigenvalue of lambda equals two has a multiplicity of two. All right, a multiplicity of two because look at look back at the polynomial. Right, see that 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 two minus lambda had a power of two meaning there were two factors of this, right? There was a 2 minus lambda, and I see them up here. 2 minus lambda, 2 minus lambda. So lambda equals 2 makes two factors in this product equal 0, not just 1. Uh, so this, this, this is, so th that means that this is not a distinct eigenvalue. Because right, you're going to see that mentioned in a lot of texts where talk about eigenvalues being distinct. This is this is a repeated eigenvalue. Right? It repeats twice. There are two factors that it makes equal zero. Now this one 
uh, there, there's only a power of one on the factor that came from there. Um, this has an, a multiplicity of one, right? Lambda equals zero. This has multiplicity of one. So it is distinct. Right, it is it is a distinct eigenvalue on its own, right? Not not repeated. But we do have our eigenvalues here, so we can we can very now easily write the spectrum, and th these would actually be really easy to check as well. All right, I can really easily check these. When lambda is two, so lambda is two. That means you know subtract two from the main diagonal. If I subtract two from the main diagonal. That would make this 0, this 0, and this negative 2. Well, if that becomes 0, then you have a row of zeros. And, uh, and if this becomes 0, you have a column of zeros. And if you have a row of zeros or a column of zeros in a matrix, the determinant 0. So this is a good eigenvalue right, for matrix P. When I, subtra when I subtract this value from the main diagonal entries, I get a, I get a matrix that has a determinant of 0. And then lambda equals 0. If this is an eigenvalue, that means that the matrix already has a determinant of zero. Right? And I'll write that off to the side. Right? If lambda, if zero is an eigenvalue of a matrix, then that matrix has a determinant of zero already, then that matrix must have a determinant of zero. And let's see that, all right? So yeah, again, if I were to subtract zeroed from the main diagonal, diagonal entries, I just get matrix P again. And do you see in matrix P? Do you see how the, the 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 second column and third column are just scalar multiples, right? If I take the third column and multiply it by two, I'd get the second column. So the, the these vectors are these column vectors are dependent vectors. And remember, if the column vectors or the row vectors, if you want to look at the rows. If the column vectors or the row vectors um, of a square matrix are dependent, then that matrix is going to have a zero determinant. Right. And you, you can you can double check if you wish. Right. Um, just take two times this minor, which would be two times zero, and you get a determinant of zero. This has a determinant of zero already. So you know if that's the case, right? If a matrix has and it goes the other way around too. I guess I should put if if and only if. You know, if a matrix has a determinant of zero already, then zero will be a um, an eigenvalue, right? So I guess I should also say it goes this way as well. Right. I hope that makes sense. All right. So then finally, the spectrum. Right? We're asked to find write the spectrum of matrix P here, right? So the spectrum, little sig little uh, lambda of P. So the spectrum of P is the set with, you know, the, the eigenvalues in it, zero and two. Right. And there's another way you can also tell that, you know, not all the eigenvalues are distinct because this is a three by three matrix, right? And if all the eigenvalues were distinct, if all the eigenvalues had a multiplicity of one, you'd have three different eigenvalues in here, but you only have two for a three by three matrix. All right, and you're going to notice that in the next video as well, and, and you may have, you may have noticed this already in this video. Uh, the the characteristic polynomial of an n by n matrix will be a degree n polynomial. All right, this was a three by three. This is a cubic polynomial. Degree. This is a degree three. If you multiply this out, this is a, this would be a degree three polynomial. You saw earlier in my two by two examples, right? The the characteristic polynomial of a two by two matrix were quadratic, right? Were degree two polynomials. 
And that's the case for any n by n matrix. The, the characteristic polynomial will be a degree n polynomial. And if you remember anything from pre-calc or algebra, a degree n polynomial with real coefficients will have up to n zeros or roots, right? Or if you set them equal to zero and solve. Um, and that's exactly what we're doing here. So for a two by two, you'll have up to two distinct eigenvalues. A three by three, you'll have up to three distinct eigenvalues. Here you only have two of them, right? Because two, two, two is repeated. For, you know, a four by four, you'll have up to four distinct eigenvalues. You know, so you could have, you know, three, you could have two, you could have just one, where all four are the same, but just know that. And that'll come up also in a future video on theorems related to eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Okay, but for right now, just I'm focusing on finding this spectrum, right? Finding all the set of all the eigenvalues of a matrix. And hopefully you've seen the procedure here. It's the same procedure every time. You know, some matrices you come across might be a little more complicated than ones I've shown here, but just know that it's the same process. Find that characteristic poly poly uh, polynomial. What's the determinant of the matrix minus lambda i? Set that equal to zero and, you know, find the solutions. You got them. You got, you bait, you'll have the eigenvalues and then you can easily write the spectrum. Okay, so hope you enjoy practicing problems of this nature and thank you.